So one of the many projects I have been playing around with is getting really small micro joints to work. Uh, took a little bit of doing and took a little bit of thinking to figure out what was going on with them, why they weren't working at first, and then once we got them working and figured out why, I figured I would share the reasons why your tiny micro joints might not be working reliably. Uh, so this is a fairly small part. This is only, uh, it's about 40 millimeters uh, this way and about 60 this way. So it's not a very large part and I am using three micro joints. I am using the gap function on the back and I'm going 0.3 millimeters wide on that. It's very small. And then over here, my micro joint is set for uh, 0.275 right here and also right here. Uh, so why I've gone with that thickness is I actually want about uh, six and a half thousandths of an inch of material or uh, right around 0.165 millimeters of material left. Uh, so I have to go a little bit bigger because I have cut curve. Uh, a good way to illustrate cut curve is uh, like so. You have to think about it. The, the cut curve is the red area. The black line is the path of travel of the laser. So if the blue line represents a micro joint we want to have, we think about that, that um, laser coming down and stopping right at the edge of the micro joint and then restarting on the other edge. Well, it's kind of obliterated the entirety of the material. So you have to add your entire cut curve. So if you're using a compensation like I am of 0 0.055 millimeter for your compensation, that means your cut curve is 0 0.11. Uh, so when you make your uh, micro joint, you need to add 0.11 millimeter onto the amount of material you want left. Uh, so I basically, what I was doing with my micro joints is basically I was trying to figure out uh, a formula for how many pounds of pressure I can use on the piece of material without bending it, uh, where I would be able to break the micro joint. So the micro joint has to be right around six and a half thousandths or so thick on 22 gauge steel, which is what I'm cutting out of, uh, 0.7 millimeter thick uh, for our metric friends. Uh, but that's the, the amount of material that I can break with my thumb uh, pushing down. So if I can break it with my thumb, when I shake the part and kind of rock the sheet back and forth, then it will still break. Uh, so anyway, that is what I came up with, and uh, you can kind of use that information. You just need to figure out what your cut curve is on your material, and then you need to work out your tinsel strength of your material and its cross-section, and then kind of you can eyeball with your part how much, uh, you know, what kind of tensile load you can put on it or what kind of pressure load you can put on it uh, without bending it, and then work out your micro joint to be just thick enough. Uh, basically, you want the part to be strong enough to where you can handle the sheet hole, but you want it to be uh, thin enough that you can kind of rock and shake the sheet a little bit and the parts rain out. Uh, that way you don't have any tip-ups and you also don't have to pry the parts out with any tools. Uh, the ideal thing is that the parts stay stuck in the sheet while you want them to, and as soon as you don't want them to, they fall on out. If this was helpful, uh, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, different thicknesses of material, uh, the micro joint size of that or what you've tried, what worked, uh, feel free to mention it in the comment section. We try to add to the community's information. So again, any information you have uh, that you might want to pass along, we're more than happy to hear. Anyway, thanks for watching.